Hey love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. So I have a very special guest. Um, Logan Russell is on here today on the podcast. I just started doing guests, so I'm so happy you can be here, Logan. Um, Before I get her talking, I want to introduce her. She lives in Charlotte currently. She's a curvy fashion blogger, as she refers to herself as, and then a body love advocate. And we've connected on the gram and have gotten to know each other a little bit more and more. And I just love everything she's all about. So I'm so happy to have her on the Confidently Uncomfortable podcast today. And I just cannot wait for you guys to hear all about her life and her story and just, oh, just hurt everything about her. I'm so excited. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. So Logan, how are you doing today? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to talk with you today and just kind of have a great conversation around fashion and body positivity and entrepreneurship. I am here for it. So very excited. All the things things that I love (laughs) and I know you guys love, so it's going to be awesome. So I just want you to tell people what compelled you to get started with your blog and everything about it. Go ahead and tell us more. (laughs) Sure. Absolutely. So I started my blog probably about four years ago. And for me, I was in a corporate job where I didn't have a lot of outlets for my passion. I didn't have I needed something creative that would really kind of bring me back to myself because I felt like I had lost myself in work. And unfortunately, that's just part of my personality. I'm one of those people where I'm like, I will go all the way in. Um, But unfortunately, when you dedicate your life to work, you can sometimes lose who you are in that. So I realized I wanted to do something outside of that. And I kept having this calling to do a blog because there are so many women out there who are size 10, 12, 14, 16 and up who didn't have at the time any fashion bloggers that they could refer to, or they were very far and few between. So, you know, I kept thinking so many women want to know how to dress themselves. I love everything about fashion. I have been so incredibly ingrained in the industry since I was little. It was something I knew I had to be a part of. And I just, it kept nagging at me. And it honestly took me years to start the blog because I was afraid. I had a fear that many of us have shared, and that was that I wasn't skinny enough, that I wasn't pretty enough, and that I wasn't perfect enough. Mm, And that kind of went right along. I know, I know, I know, I know. That went right along with all the insecurities that I had and my struggles with body image. And I didn't want to be in front of the camera. I was that girl who hid from the camera. And one day my mom just looked at me and she was like, Logan, girls your size deserve to know what fashion options are out there for them. And they want to see girls who dress themselves well that are their size just as much as you do. They deserve to have style inspiration just like everyone else. And she was like, why are you holding back? You deserve it. Why don't you feel that you do? And it kind of took my mom having that tough conversation with me and kind of just like that light bulb went off. And I was like, she's right. This is ridiculous. And I have to face these fears. I need to get through this. I need to make a change. And I want other women to feel amazing about themselves. And I want myself to feel amazing about myself. I was like, that's the whole beauty of fashion is that it has this wonderful power. When you put on the right outfit, when you find the right thing that truly expresses who you are, it lights up that confidence in you. Yes. Your personality makes you the best version of yourself. Like it truly, truly makes a difference. So that was really the beginning of my journey towards a body positive mindset. That was my journey towards my blog. It all really just started falling into place. So, you know, I started the blog with a like $200 camera I got on eBay and <laughs> my husband was thankfully already into photography. So he was like, sure, let's do it. And he was like, Insta husband. What? Yeah. I wasn't like really convinced <laughs> Tommy to take pictures of me. Right. So you have a <laughs> husband, tell him he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will. Thank you. You know, and he you know, bless him because I was not easy to start this with because I didn't want to be in front of the camera. It wasn't something that was natural to me. I was very insecure at the time, but I was determined to push through it. And what was wild is shoot after shoot, my confidence would grow. And every single time I started to finally see through that lens, the beauty of myself. Mm-hmm. 
And it really took forcing myself to look at myself with grace, be gentle, be understanding, and stop looking for perfection. That, that was the key to just getting through a photo shoot and finding things that you liked. But that, that idea of when I had to go through and look through that lens and edit those pictures as I suddenly forced myself to stop nitpicking, to stop looking for those flaws and go, wow, look at where we have come. Like you are beautiful. Do you have imperfections? Yes. But let's stop looking at those. Let's focus at the, on the whole. Yeah. Let's focus on you as a person. Let's focus on the story we're telling through these images. And it was that process that really brought me to a place of self-confidence and where I realized my worth. And as I started to share those images and started to share my story, more women came together and seeing all of us come together and share these insecurities or share these hard times that we've had, but also then share our confidence and cheer each other on. That was the epitome of what I wanted to do. And it just created this amazing, amazing, amazing community that I am so thankful for. And it's taken me you know, a long time to grow it to where it is now. And I'm really proud of how far it's come, but it's pretty incredible how I started it as something, as a creative outlet and something to do, kind of help motivate others, but it in turn made such a huge change in myself mm-hmm. and really took me to a whole nother part of myself I never thought I would get to. I never thought I would be in such a great place with my body and such a great place with who I am. And it's just been an incredible vehicle for that. So that's how it grew. That's how it started. And now I'm just so happy to be doing it alongside, you know, my full-time job and which is tricky to figure out, but you know what? Hey, we're making it work. We're figuring it out. It's not perfect, but it's something that I love and I'm so grateful for every day. That is so amazing. I mean, just everything you're talking about, so many women feel that pull where they're feeling like they're not enough in so many different aspects of their lives. The fact that you saw that and you still pushed forward and that's the whole idea of, of not losing yourself in your job. And it's okay to have like, to like your job and it's okay to have a full-time job. I love that. But to still find that time to have your passion and then also use your ability to share your truth and be so confident in yourself and really help other people do the same. I think that that is huge. And so one thing I want to touch on is that your mom pushing you to do this when you first started, I'm sure you weren't like, like you said, you weren't the most confident at first, like when you first, you just kind of dove in. And so that's the whole concept of my podcast is confidently uncomfortable. and, And the fact that you don't just wake up and just immediately feel confident. It just Absolutely every not. single day. <laughs> no, right? yeah. so, so I want to know, like, as far as getting to that point where you're at now and inspiring so many people, like what hurdles did you personally face just with, with body confidence or self-image or anything like whether they're growing up, like what are some hurdles that you face with your life and how did you overcome them? Sure. So, you know, I completely agree. And I think that the name of your podcast really aligns with <laughs> that. Thanks, journey. girl. And it's true. You have to, you know, a lot of people say you have to be uncomfortable. You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And when you get to that next step, that's going to, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to be easy. Um, And that's why it takes work to get there. And for me, I say, you know, it takes work every single day, whether you know you're doing the work or not, you know, it's there. Mm -hmm. Some of the challenges that I faced, you know, I think honestly being so, enveloped in the fashion industry and knowing from a young age that I wanted to be a part of it. And it was something I idolized. And I mean, I poured over magazines because we lived up in the mountains and (laughs) dial up was a thing. (laughs) And it was not great. (laughs) And you didn't have online magazines like you do now. So I poured over magazines. I read all the books. I kept up with the shows. I did all the things. And one of the big big elements that were missing from that passion were seeing women who looked like my body type in the media. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't happen. There wasn't any, there wasn't a role model I could look up to who was, you know, celebrated for who she was and her body was celebrated, you know, and she was a curvy girl. And I was always, you know, I was, my mom would say, you know, you're big boned. You were just, you were built a little bit different. And I was, I've always been built different than the girls around me. And I knew that that was a part of who I was. I was always mm-hmm. athletic, but I was just a bigger girl. And 
you know, for me, that was, I had more muscle and strength and things like that. But, you know, it was a struggle when you're moving into women's sizes and your friends are still shopping, you know, like tween sizes or limited to going to regular gap, not kids. (laughs) gap. um, So that was something that I think became the seed for my insecurities and for my body image issues is just that I never saw that. And so I got this idea in my head that, you know, from diet culture and from the fashion industry that I needed to be a certain size in order to have worth or to be accepted as beautiful or to be successful. And so at a young age, I started dieting. I, unfortunately, another thing that contributed to my weight was my father passed away when I was eight Mm -hmm. and I looked to food for comfort. So that also kind of worked in there. So as I'm um, developing that emotional eating pattern and starting that path, I'm also absorbing all of this information from the media and from imagery um, and for doctors that were saying that my weight was related to my worth and Mm. that I was not okay or good enough because of my size. So that unfortunately led to an eating disorder. I was bulimic for a large portion of my life. It's still something that I battle with in times of stress or when I'm triggered. And it's something that I have to be aware of every day. Thankfully, I am so, so grateful. My mother was incredibly, incredibly positive influence in my life. I think she may have said a few things in, because we talk about this often, like she and I, she's like, I I worry that I maybe said a few things that, you know, like talking about my own weight or my own body that influenced you. I was like, maybe, but how were you to know better? That wasn't something we talked about then. But when it came to me, my mother always told me I was beautiful. I was perfect just as I was. I didn't need to change for anyone else. And she always highlighted my strengths. And I am so, so grateful for that. But I think that this story also shows the power and influence of outside sources other than what's in your direct home on your body image. Because even though I was getting that at home, outside of the home, I was hearing something different. So yeah. um, I probably started, I think my my eating disorder definitely started, I remember distinctly in the fifth grade. And it didn't wasn't something that I truly got control of until I was, I'm going to say probably my senior year of college actually probably after college, I'm going to say. So it takes a long time. So if you're somewhere out there who is battling with an eating disorder and battling with body image issues, please know that the expectation is not that you, like Jordan said, wake up and are suddenly confident and it goes away. You have to do the work and it's okay to ask for help. I had to ask for help. I had to ask for someone to keep me accountable you know, it was scary to talk to my husband about my eating disorder. And at the time we weren't married and I was terrified. I was like, he's going to leave me. He's going to think this girl is crazy. Like, and he didn't. And said, he stuck by me and he said, I'm going to hold you accountable because I know you're beautiful. I know that you are perfect the way that you are. I know that you don't need to be doing this. And kind of, he was able to talk through with me and help me see another perspective. So make sure that you can find a person in your life who can hold you accountable and who's going to be that cheerleader for you. But they need to be willing to tell you when you're in the wrong in a loving way. Mm-hmm. And sometimes maybe some tough love, depending on your personality, because <laughs> that's how I was. But, you know, my husband and then my sisters and my mom, you know, I think it's probably it's the hardest to talk to my mom about, but we try to keep an open dialogue about it. My sisters, when I was too afraid to talk to my mom or anyone else, they were my rock. Try and find those people in your life who are going to support you and who aren't going to judge you. They're just going to understand that this is part of your battle and this is something that you have to work through and they're going to be there for you. So, you know, those were the big battles with my body image. Like I said, it wasn't really until after college that I got control of it. And there are times when I'm stressed and when I'm grieving that that really comes back. You know, my stepfather passed away. Gosh, I guess it'll be three years in this November. And it was such a stressful time. It happened very quickly. He had pancreatic cancer. He passed away, you know, within three and a half months of being diagnosed and it brought back, it triggered a lot of my bulimia, um, habits. And I mean, I was on the phone with my sisters, just like constantly trying to just talk about it. When you get in those moments where you're triggered and where things are happening, you have to voice 
you, you have to say, I need help. You have to say, this is happening. You've got to hold yourself accountable. And the only way to do that is by putting it out there. And you've got to have somebody you can share that with, whether it's a therapist or a friend or a sister or whomever, you've got to have someone because saying it out loud that I want to go make myself sick. I want to binge eat. I want to you know, do whatever it is for you. You've got to be able to have somebody that can you can talk to and tell them that it's happening because it holds you accountable and it helps them know that you need support right now. So, you know, that was something where I had to really go through that. And I was in a point, you know, and that's after I really developed the self-confidence. So, you know, it's okay for you to feel like it doesn't totally go away. I am a believer in that it never really leaves you. So, and that's normal. Just that's something that I can't stress enough that it is so, so normal for this to still be a battle for you, even if you feel like for the most part, you have control of it over it. So know that that's normal, know that that's okay. And it's okay to ask for help. And so one of the reasons that I started, I recently did a body love challenge was to try and help other women talk about those insecurities and those struggles they go through, whether they have any eating disorder or they have body image issues or whatever it may be. And I loved seeing women coming together and sharing their stories and helping each other understand that it's normal. It's okay. And this is a safe place to talk about it. So hopefully I hope to see more safe spaces develop, um, that we can talk about it. And I know that, and I'm so thankful for your podcast because I know that that is a safe place where we can all have discussions and Absolutely. yeah, those are my biggest challenges. And that's, that's really how I overcame them was through that support system and learning to ask for help. Mm, I thank you so much for sharing all that seriously, because I I can already, I'm thinking of so many women that I've worked with that have, there are certain things you've said that very much relate to their lives. And even my own life, I just feel I can relate to that so much. And that, that fear to ask for help and whatever it is for you. So it can just be like feeling like you need help and direction because you're constantly in that state of negative self-talk, right? I think that a lot of women will come to me and, and say, I, I do not love what I see in the mirror. And not only do I not love it, but there's this form of self-hatred and, and to where they're really walking by the mirror and they will just pick themselves apart and it breaks my heart. It absolutely breaks my heart. So we need more women like you that are going to tell people like, listen, you can love yourself like unconditionally. And then it's okay if you are still working on it every single day. So thank you for that. What is something, so someone that is like, like I was saying, someone that is like really struggling with just that self-worth and feeling like they're just stuck in that either comparison mindset or just really negative self-talk. Like what is something that, that you would say to them, um, to really help them come out of that space and really start working towards self-love? I would say if working toward a, toward self-love is something that you are ready for, and that you want to make the commitment to make a commitment. It's a commitment to yourself and you know, find some strategies that are going to work best for you and your personality because not everything works for the same people. So try different things. Some of my biggest tips, you know, talking about picking yourself apart in the mirror. One of my biggest habits throughout my life, ooh, especially, you know, I, this is something that I used to do every single morning was I would look in the mirror and I would lift up my shirt or I'd be in my underwear or whatever. And I would look in the mirror and I'd flex my stomach and I'd compare how small it was to the day before I take pictures. Oh, I do all the things. The oh my gosh. I won't even go down the road of when I did a fitness competition. And that was, even, that was even, that was worse, but we're, we don't have enough time for that. So, <laughs> it's another podcast. You know, again, going back to that mirror where you're picking yourself apart, challenge yourself to get in front of that mirror. And instead of picking yourself apart, I want you to spend three minutes finding something that you love about your body. Or like I mentioned before, where seeing myself through the lens helped me stop picking apart those little things and see that beautiful whole picture. I want you to do that in that mirror. I imagine that's a camera lens. And I want you to say, what's the whole picture I'm seeing here? Mm. And what are the beautiful things that I love about myself? And I want you to say it to yourself and literally say, I love you and look yourself in the eyes in the mirror. And I'm telling you, it's going to have a powerful effect. You may cry. You may laugh because you feel ridiculous, but there is no way you're not going to see or feel something major when you do that. Um, my other big tip is, you know, 
finding time, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you have for mindfulness and meditation. That's something that's really helped me Mm -hmm. because sometimes it's so hard to get out of that negative self-talk and get out of that negative mind frame and finding the right meditation for you is going to help you learn tools to change your mindset in a matter of minutes. And maybe that's stepping away from a situation. You're going to learn tools where you can step away, take some deep breaths, use some imagery or meditation practices to really change that mood. So finding the time to do that and create a habit has been really helpful for me. Some of the things that I recommend, there's the Omvana app, the Calm app. I just um, downloaded the Insight app, which I'm really excited about because um, there's a particular woman, Melissa Ambrosini, that I highly, highly recommend. And she, you can follow her on the Insight app. Her meditations have been a fantastic. Um, I look for ones for anxiety and stress because often that's what is triggering our negative self-talk. She has podcasts on body positivity and changing your mindset about your body. She has things about starting your perfect day, all sorts of resources that can help you. So again, I'll, asking I'll for I'll put help. these in the show notes for you guys. Oh yeah, that would be great. Thank you. And I can send some links to you. So yes, those would be the big, the two biggest things that I would say to anyone who's struggling with their body image or with their self-worth and they want to make changes, you know, take that time to really spend time in front of the mirror with yourself in a positive light and change that habit. And then also find time for meditation and mindfulness. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's something that I, I work with my clients a lot on because the mindset is such a huge part of body love and acceptance. And, and I want to know your thoughts on just the, the current like body positivity movement and how you feel like that's impacting diet culture, because, um, I definitely feel like there is this butting heads of the two. And I would love to hear your thoughts because I know you're super into fitness and you're, super, I love it because you're like amazing. And we need more women like you in the fitness industry. So yeah, seriously. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that current movement and, and anything you have to say as far as that. I think that it's fantastic. I think it's great that we have finally felt this. I don't know. It's almost like a switch happen, like a light switch. Yeah. Where now we finally feel like, you know what? We can say this isn't okay. Mm -hmm. We can say that diet culture has a negative impact on our communities and on our, on ourselves. I think it's amazing. I, what I love the most though is where we're not just saying this isn't right, but we're finding alternative solutions that are helping people find health and fitness, but in a much more um, mindful way and a way that's more balanced. Mm -hmm. And that isn't going to create those habits in diet culture that are so negative to us. So things like I think people standing up to Weight Watchers, but what I love seeing especially is seeing other nutritionists seeing um, fitness gurus, seeing trainers like yourself who are talking about how we can reach our goals in a healthy way for us physically and mentally that are going to be lifestyle changes for long-term improvements in ourselves and finding the best versions of ourselves. And that doesn't always mean focusing on a number on a scale. Yes. So that is my number one favorite thing I'm oh saying. I know some people are like pumping and like clapping right now. In their cars. <laughs> like this is awesome. It's so freaking true. I love, oh, I just love your, your, we, when we first connected, like that was something I really knew. I was like, this is my girl. Like she totally gets yeah. it. <laughs> Same. I was like, we can talk for hours about this. I was like, this podcast better not be two hours long. But (laughs) But I think that the body pod surgery movement, exactly like you said, it's it's amazing and it's so much more inclusive. And I think that it's there's still a lot of work to do, obviously, but it's kind of been like a domino effect. Like once some people were like, it's not okay, and they're explaining why and sharing their stories, like so many more people are doing that. And I feel like it just wasn't talked about before. And and we were just supposed to try and fit this cookie cutter image of what like the perfect woman is and like what fitness is. And I just feel like their fitness, fitness can be all sizes and you don't know someone's health just by looking at them. I've worked with so many women and you don't know, and even just the mental health things of, of that too. And I think that goes with all of that. And then I love the other thing you said that really stuck out to me was a healthy way of making those changes. I think that that is something that I want to continue to work on because I've had women and I'd love your thoughts on this too, that have come to me and and said, like, I feel guilty in both 
sides of things. So they feel like they feel this pressure to lose weight when it's like because of diet culture, which F diet culture, by the way, but (laughs) the other side of things is they also feel bad because they know they want to make some changes, but they feel like guilty saying that they want to make changes because it's like, well, I I have to love my body right now, but like, I really feel like I healthier at a different weight or like whatever that is. So just the approach on that, I wonder if there's some way to, to bridge that gap. So what has worked for you? Because I know you're someone who, again, super focused on health and fitness and lifestyle. So what are some things that help you with that or that you would explain to someone that's having that inner struggle of, of feeling that wanting change? Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, don't feel guilty for wanting to change. Okay. You know, your body better than anyone else does. So you are allowed to love yourself in whatever season size or weight that you are at right now, Mm -hmm. but still choose to make changes to better yourself. And let me tell you right now, bettering yourself does not mean losing weight. That doesn't mean making that number on the scale going down. Doesn't mean that you need less body fat percentage. Bettering yourself is finding the version of yourself that feels good. So Mm -hmm. if that means focusing less on the number on the scale and thinking about movement and what you're eating and what is honoring your body. So how do you honor your body that you want to celebrate? What does that mean for you? Does that mean, you know, going to a yoga class every day? Does it mean going to CrossFit or lifting heavy, or does it mean going swimming or does it simply mean being active for 30 minutes a day, which is my number one recommendation. And that's like getting down on the floor and playing with your kids for 30 minutes. There's nothing wrong with that being your activity and fueling your body. Doesn't mean you have to eat salads for every meal. It's (laughs) just like, eat that cake. If that cake is going to honor your body right now and the champs with it, do it. Champs, (laughs) champs, um, all the way, but you know, like you, you know, your body best. So do what honors your body and, you know, I like to think of it as I really try and honor my body with food that's going to fuel it. And then I know it feels good after I eat and I try and pay attention to that. That goes back to having, making that time for being mindful for yourself. But I also know that sometimes I just really want a cheeseburger. Like last night, I was like, I want nothing more than five guys right now. And we went and did it. And let me tell you. Yes, I can relate. (laughs) Yes. So, but you know, then today we're going to go work out. You just, and it don't, we've also have to change do not think of working out as punishment for the food that you eat. I'm not working out because I ate the cheeseburger. I'm working out because it's going to fuel my body and it's going to make my day better. So I think just really focusing in on it's okay to want to make changes for your lifestyle and for yourself and still love your body. Yes, you can do both things at the same time, but make sure that you are not relating your best version of yourself to a weight and try and focus more on how you feel and what that means to you physically and mentally. Oh, that is so well put. Thank you for saying that. That is something that I love hearing other pe- people's perspective. And I knew you would have a great, great take on this. So thank you for that. So rapid fire questions. We are going to finish up this final thing, final five minutes where I'm ready for it. Questions. It's the most <laughs> random thing ever, but just, are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready for it. Let's do awesome. it. All right. What is your favorite word? <laughs> Ooh, uh, I'm counting down. Just kidding. Oh my God. I don't even know. Word you say all the time. Amazing. I say amazing okay. way too much. It's a problem. <laughs> That's okay. It's amazing. Um, all right. Tacos or pizza? Tacos all the oh, Me too. Thank God. I'm, I was going to have to turn this now if you said no. <laughs> um, all right. Favorite dessert? Cake. Yes. Okay. Ooh, type of cake. French macarons. I changed that. Ooh. French macarons by how far, but I do love a good cake. Like love a good cake. birthday cake, like as in I want white birthday cake with a nice buttercream that's from like the grocery store. Yeah. Like a fancy. big Costco sheet cake. Done. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So this is a weird one. Um, what is your favorite like sound or noise? Like something you like to hear? Ooh. The cha-ching sound whenever I get money in PayPal. Yes. I actually have my phone on loud whenever that comes in, but I love that. <laughs> it's awesome. And then <laughs> with the concept of competently and comfortable, I want to know what is like one thing that you're working towards or you're working on. It could be a passion project that is going to be a little bit uncomfortable for you. So it's going to be really dive into that confidently uncomfortable zone. <laughs> So something that I really want to do in the coming year in 2020 is actually, I would like to start my own podcast. Um, So I'm not going to release the name yet, but it's something that I really want to do because again, like meeting wonderful people like you and be able to share our incredible conversations. I was about to say amazing, but I stopped myself and switched. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, that's something that I would love for other women to hear. And, you know, I've got a couple ideas. So um, that is something that is, I am very, very, very looking forward to in the next yes. year. You heard it first, guys. The 2020 <laughs> podcast for Logan is coming. Be on the lookout. Um, that's going to be awesome. Can I be on it? So yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. You'll see that was all we were right planning on that. <laughs> done. I love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you for your time with that. So rapid fire questions done. It's been so much fun just hanging out with you today. And I know the girls have loved it too. Everyone that listened to the podcast. So I really appreciate everything you've done and just sharing your story and being real and getting confidently and comfortable with us. So I appreciate you, Logan. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This was amazing. And I cannot wait to talk with you again soon. Yes. Bye, girl. Bye. <laughs> Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly, don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, Go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot support at jagofit360.com for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.